Hi, this is Hans van der Kwast, Senior Lecturer at IHC Delft Institute for Water Education. In this video, we are going to make a fun map, not for a particular reason, just for fun, a Lego map of the Ruhr catchment. I've combined knowledge from other videos and tutorials that I found on the internet and apply it here to the Ruhr catchment. What we need is a polygon layer with the boundary of the catchment and a digital elevation model. The first step is to create a regular grid. You find it under the research tools, create grid. The grid type is rectangles. We want rectangles to get this kind of raster. And I use the layer extent from the Ruhr boundary polygon layer. Now we need to give a horizontal and a vertical spacing. We can use the measure tool to estimate the size of our Lego bricks. And I think here around three kilometers would be okay. So I switch the units to kilometers and I use three kilometers for the horizontal and the vertical spacing. And I run it and it creates the regular grid with the three kilometer spacing. We use select by location to select those pixels that intersect with the Ruhr boundary. If we would use clip, it will also clip to the boundaries and we will use the rectangles at the boundaries. So now I have a selection of those grid cells that intersect with the boundary. If I invert the selection, then I can remove it and we now only have those grid cells that overlap with the boundary. The next step is to get the mean elevation per grid cell. I use the zonal statistics. So the input is the DEM and the vector layer is the grid. I can make a output column prefix that I call DEM and I want the mean value. Let's check in the attribute table and I see there the mean values of the DEM for each grid cell. Now we are ready to do the styling. In this case we use the graduated renderer and we choose there the DEM mean field. And I'm going to use the same color ramp that I used for the DEM. And this is Vicky Knutux one. And you can use a distribution that you like. I use here natural breaks, janks in five classes. Now you can double click on a color and refine the styling to look like Lego bricks. Therefore we need to add three more of these symbol layers. So in total we have four. Let's get back to the lowest one, which is the shadow and first do the one that represents the grid color. And we can sample the color from the map. And I just need to change the properties of the stroke make it black and then 87% opacity. And for the shadow, that's the lowest one, I'm going to change the fill color also to black. And I use a 54% transparency opacity. Use no pen for the stroke style. And I give it an offset of 0 0.45 for both X and Y. And now you can already see in the preview a little shadow that is dropped. Now we need to change the first two symbol layers. We can use the geometry generator, but it's easier to use the centroid fill, which automatically sets it to the centroids of those grid polygons. I change the simple marker of the first one to take the color 
sampled from the legend. I changed the stroke color to black. And the opacity of 87%. And the stroke width of 0 0.1. And for the second symbol layer, I'm going to use also the centroid fill, and that will be then the shadow of the centroid. Also make it black, 54% opacity, no pen, and I'm going to give it an offset of 0 0.3. We have now a little shadow. Do OK, and I see here that the centroids with the dropped shadow show up. Still a bit small, and it depends on the zoom level how it looks like. So we're going to fix that. So double click. And I'm going to change the units. To meters at scale and I want them to be half of the pixel, so 1500 meters. And the same for the shadows. Okay, now they're a bit bigger, looks a bit more like Lego bricks, and when I zoom in and out they also stay the same. So I can apply this now to the other colors. Copy the symbol and paste it. And now the only thing is that I need to sample the colors from the legend. And I can take it here from the DEM, but if you don't have that, then before going into this procedure, you could also duplicate uh, the layer and then sample it from the duplicated layer. Now there's only one thing that we can tweak and that's the symbol levels. It's the order of drawing the different symbols and now they're all drawn at the same moment. So I'm just gonna give them a continuous number starting from 10 and increase them. This is to create the effect that uh, the blocks are a bit stacked with the shadows. And there we see the effect. So the higher blocks look higher than the lower blocks. Now let's create a print layout, a new print layout. Call it Lego. And let's make a map. First, I need to go to Page Properties and make it Portrait. Zoom to the extent. Add the map. Leave a bit of space for the title. And resize it. So the map shows up nicely in the center. Let's add a legend. Let's remove some of these items, switch off auto update. And now we only have the DM left over. Let's call it elevation. Now I would like to have those symbols as square blocks, so I'm going to make them the same size, 7x7. Seven seven. Now it looks more like uh, the same bricks. Create a scale bar. Of course it needs to have nice colors too. Go to fonts and colors. And let's sample some nice colors from the map.
and let's remove the line. That looks nice. Let's change the font. One of the few occasions that I can use the Comic Sans Serif. Let's make all the text uh, red. Also for the legend. It has a subgroup heading. Let's also change that to Comic Sans Serif. And the item font the same. Change the color to red. Give it a title. Change the font of the title. Turn it to red. And we need a north arrow and I'm going to use a picture for that. Little end to indicate the north. And there it is, our map is done. So just for fun, an easy way to create Lego maps. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more videos, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And for free GIS tutorials, go to gisopencourseware.org.